our physical decline over time. We call this aging, but aging is a disease. Let, let me explain why. So first of all, aging results in a physical decline. I think we do agree with that. It limits the quality of life. That's a disease. And it has a very specific pathology. Aging does all of this. And in doing so, it fulfills every category of what we call a disease, except one. And that is that it impacts more than half of the population. If you look at the manuals of geriatrics, the definition of aging uh, is that it's exactly the same as diseases, except that it affects more than half the population. Make the argument here is that there's no good reason why we have to say that something that happens to 49.9% of the population, whether it's heart disease or diabetes, diabetes. Why do we call that a, a disease? Then something that happens to say 51% or in the case of aging, 70 to 80% of us, if we live long enough, why that is something we should just cast aside and say, well, that's just life. Let's just, you know, that's natural. Uh, we don't call cancer natural anymore. We don't call heart disease natural anymore, even though they are natural. Uh, what we do is we fight against them. And the difference between those things and aging is that we didn't have an understanding of why aging occurs, but now we do. And so we can address it just like every other medical condition. We came up with eight or nine hallmarks of aging. Uh, we don't call these causes of aging because that would be too scandalous, but we, we call them hallmarks of aging. And these are things you've probably heard of. I know you've reported on them. Senescent cells, zombie cells in the body, uh, loss of stem cells, telomeres, so the end of chromosomes get shorter. There's a list. But what I've been working on for my career, uh, and I believe getting increasingly close, is to identifying what makes all of those things happen. Can you boil the aging process down to an equation that explains why we don't live longer than we actually do and why some species do live for hundreds and some for thousands of years? So first of all, it's important to know that our lifespan and our health in old age, uh, only 20% of that we inherit from our parents. The rest is mainly up to how we live our lives. So that's very, that's empowering. And what we have seen is that there's an internal biological clock that ticks away and we can measure it in the lab. Norman, I could take your, your blood uh, or you could send it to me. And in a few days, I could tell you very precisely how old you are uh, and what you'll, when you're likely to die, what year. And even that's if you continue doing what you do. And I hope that you're healthy. You, you I'm sure you are. You're a doctor. Uh, but if you smoke, you can have the clock accelerate. Uh, and if you eat well, if you eat less often, if you exercise, uh, you can slow that clock. So what is that clock? It's called the epigenetic clock. Uh, and it's actually the epigenome is the key word here. So let me explain briefly. There are two types of information in the body. One is genetic, the information we get from our parents. But the other type of information that is equally important is what's called the epigenetic component. And that can change with how we live our lives. And the epigenome, just to summarize, is how the cell reads the DNA. So a cell that's in your in your brain has to use a particular type of epigenome to stay a nerve cell and a skin cell uses a different epigenome. And it's the loss of that epigenomic information that I believe is the main driver of the aging process. In other words, aging is just simply a loss of information over time. The concept is that what we've realized is that most of disease and disability is not driven by our genes. It's actually controlled by the regulator of those genes, which is the epigenome. One of the best examples of that um, are these people here. So these are um, individuals from two sets of twins. These are in Denmark, a very large study of Danish twins, looking at the effects of genes versus environment or epigenetics, which is what responds to the environment. And so if we click the button forward once, you'll see that the identical twin of these two individuals, hopefully you can see looks a lot younger and is actually younger biologically. We can now measure that. And it turns out that by living a healthy lifestyle, often you hear about uh, doctors recommending these things. We know a lot about how to slow down the aging process. You don't just look younger, you actually are biologically younger. And that's why if you exercise, you eat right, you eat less often, you take the right supplements, you will be biologically younger and you will actually stave off disease until much later. So what does that actually mean? If, if we go back one slide, the concept is information. So the main type of information that we know about is the genome in the DNA, but there's also another level of information that's just as important and even more complex. That's the epigenome. Uh, and those are the structures that control how the DNA is bundled and shaped and which genes out of the 25,000 get turned on and off when we're forming an embryo um, and we develop. And those genes can be switched on and off depending on how we live. If we put our bodies in a state of ad perceived adversity or adversity that isn't too damaging, the epigenome will actually respond and be more stable. So the idea is you want to stabilize your epigenome so that your cells remember how to function youthfully for longer. The analogy as shown in this slide is a compact disc. Hopefully all of you remember what those things are. Incredible technology. You could fit about 20 songs on there. When I teach at Harvard, the, the kids are like, what are you talking about? This is ridiculous. So if you're young, it's like resetting a computer or, or pressing the buttons on the side of your iPhone. Uh, so what 
the analogy is that the digital information is the DNA, um, and that's the music, but you need to read it. It's not just pits on a, a metallic disc. The epigenome is the equivalent of the reader of that information, and the songs are the, are the genes. And aging, I believe, and our new paper presents very strong evidence this is the case. Aging is, the, is akin to scratches on the CD, so that the cells still have the music, the genes, but they're just not read correctly at the right time in the right place, so that your cells forget how to work. So we see that brain cells become more like skin cells, and skin cells become more like kidney cells. We become a melange instead of highly differentiated functioning youthful cells. And so that's the information theory of aging. And what we found out in this paper is what drives that process in large part is broken DNA, avoid x-rays, CT scans, if you can help it, um, don't fly too much and uh, and uh, live w- ways that actually prevent those breaks because that disrupts the epigenome we showed. But here's the, the cool point is that we've discovered you can polish off those scratches and get back the beautiful music of cells and their youth. We've done extensive studies in mice. We needed to know if it was safe. It's, it's very safe. We've never seen anything negative after years of work and driving this process, we found that those three genes, O, S, and K for short, these are gene regulators that set off a cascade of events during embryogenesis to make a young human. Turns out, lucky for all of us, I think, is that those three genes also set back the clock in adult cells without causing tumors or any disease. And without bringing them back so far that... And and this is the thing that, that blows my mind is you'd think that if you just keep it on for a long time, you'd go back to zero, age zero, which you don't want. It's not true. They go, cells go back about 80% and stop. There's a barrier that prevents them from going back to zero if we leave off that other gene. It's a gift to humanity. 